Hello and welcome to another Blender Cookie tutorial. I'm David Ward and as you can see right here uh, this tutorial is going to cover creating a stylized dragon. Something in the vein that you might have seen or you not you might not have seen but something that could have been on uh, something like Star Wars Clone Wars that uh, carved you know chiseled s s stylized shape. So anyways uh, this is just uh, uh, a draft of, of a couple of ideas I was playing with today before I got started with this tutorial series. You can see some different ideas I was going with. So anyways, here's some sketches that uh, Wes Burke sent me about. And that was some normal maps and color maps. Anyway, um, so anyways, a couple of sketches just to try to get a, a feel of how I want it to look. So anyways, we're going to try to make one a lot like this. I'm sure it won't look exactly the same because you know, it's it's a different project. So anyways, uh, first thing we need to do in order to be able to do this is get the latest copy of Blender from the development website, graphicall.org. And you just go to www.graphicall.org. And if you just go there, it'll automatically redirect you to the builds page. So we need to get the latest copy. So just scroll and scroll down. And we want to, I have Windows, so I go where it says all OS's, that's operating systems, I go to Windows, and then View. And it's going to arrange them by, by the date, the newest ones at the top. So I'll go ahead and get this one here, 2.5 R2 revision 29432 for Windows 32-bit. Go ahead and click on that. And there's just some information here about what they've included in this build. And it's more for if you if you know how to read Python and things like that. Since I don't, I'm just going to go ahead and skip over it all and just go ahead and download the build. And I'm just going to open it. There's nothing to install, so I don't really need to download a exe. Don't really need to save it. If I can just open it, and then I can drag and drop it into a new folder. So as this is downloading, I'll go ahead and open up my um, where's it at? Blender. Go to my C drive. My program files and Blender Foundation. You can see I already have a few versions of Blender 2.5 already loaded. But uh, I like to keep the latest one here in the Blender latest folder. As you can see, it's empty right now. So I'll just go ahead and grab that zip 7z file, 7zip. It's uh, just like WinZip or something like that. If you're not familiar with that, you can download it. Just Google 7zip and you'll be able to get it for free. It's open source also. So anyways, select all those. Just drag and drop. Nothing to install. It was... Put them in your little directory there. Not sure how long it'll take. Depending on your computer speed, I guess. So, okay. And once that finishes up, you're good to go. So just uh, double click on blender.exe and it'll open up for you. I'll go ahead and rearrange it so it fits in my recording window here. Okay. So I'll go ahead and open up that dragon that I've already made. Be on my G drive, Blender files, Dragon, there we are, comps, and it was 1A1, I believe, open, yeah. So here we go. Oh, one thing that happens when you download a latest build, sometimes you have to set up the user interfaces, so let me go ahead and do something real quick, just make a new scene so I can set up my user preferences, and I want to go to input, and emulate three button mouse and then save that as the default. So now I open the dragon and I can hold down alt and rotate like I'm not used to doing. So anyways, so here's the little dragon guy I came up with. This is just like I said, just a comp just to get the style down because I can kind of get an idea of how to do it while being recorded. So anyways, um, so let's go ahead and see what we can do. See if we can do something similar to this. So we'll just go file new and just start with a box because that's how I started with uh, with that red guy there. So let's go to a typical modeling techniques. Just go into tab and edit mode, and I want to W subdivide top one, and I want to do it three times. And then I'm going to select all of these guys and hit delete vertices. One thing that I you got to do. Um, Right now, this setting right here is called Limit Selection to Visible. Right now, it's turned on, so whenever I select something, it's only selecting what's visible. So what's, you know, at the top of the mesh, basically. So since I'm looking at the top, 
by hitting 7 on the numpad, it's only selecting these top vertices. So I turn that off, then I can select multiple ones. Okay, so back to top view, just go ahead and delete that half and vertices, there we go. And we'll go ahead and add the, the good old mirror modifier. And uh, let's go ahead and get started modeling. Let's go to the hit three on your numpad and go to the right side of the view and we'll select everything. We're gonna scale it S on the Y axis. There we go. And kind of just, uh, by the way, if you're not familiar, B on your, on your keyboard gives you the crosshairs and you can click and drag and select multiple vertices or if you're in edge mode it'll select faces or select edges and if you're in face mode it'll select faces so on and so forth so let's kinda get the general shape of his head going here Just kinda arrange it however you want you can use whatever style you want this is the style that I'm going to use so for the purposes of this tutorial you might follow along with this style uh, later on, when you're doing your own dragon, you can use whatever style you want. Um, okay, we're going to top view, start rounding out the back of the head, and now the snout. And let's just make the head a little bit more narrow. Let's go ahead and turn on the clipping over here on the uh, mirror modifier. Start making this a little bit more narrow. Let's add a ring right here. Control R adds adds rings. Go scale that down some, move it in. Same thing over here. Okay. And let's go to the front view, one on your numpad, and select all these corners. These guys. Back to front view and just kind of drag it down until it's kind of rounded out. Same thing there. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. If I do, to select this uh this is a uh, whole line is kind of it's a, it's a loop but it's not going around anything so I don't really want to call it a looped per se but it's kind of round that out also a little bit not too much because remember we're going to have a, a fairly sharp corner there on the model okay so we got the general shape down what I want to do now is I want to jump in and start on his nose his nostrils so I select this face right there just go to face select mode and I'm going to hit E to extrude, and I'm going to scale it down, kind of move it around, scale it down some more, and I want to go ahead and extrude again, and we're going to go inside now, scale it down, go back inside some more. Okay, so we got the nostrils, let's go ahead and turn on the smooth shading, and we'll go ahead and give him a subdivision surface also. Okay, so let's uh, collapse this. And yeah, that's fine. We'll collapse. Now let's leave the mirror open so we can turn clipping on and off if we need to here in a few minutes when we start getting into some more detail stuff. Anyways, back into edit mode. Let's go ahead and give another ring right here. And let's start playing with these nostrils, getting get them flared up a little bit. Okay. Looking good. Let's make it a little wider. Bring it. Grab all these here in the middle. Don't want that guy. Okay. Drag them towards each other a little bit. There we go. Okay. Now, we've got the basic nostrils done. We'll add more detail shortly. Let's go ahead and add the eye socket. So I want to put that about right here. So I want to subdivide these guys right here by putting another ring there. About like so, and let's bring this part up some. This part in. Then. And select these two faces right here. And extrude once, scale down a little bit. Extrude again, scale down a little bit. And extrude again and start going inward. Kind of rotate it around some. And let's go ahead and delete those faces because it's going to be the eye socket and we don't need any any uh, mesh that's not going to be seen ever because the eyeball will be covering it up. And I'll go ahead and add a loop right there and a loop right there. 
so we can round out that eye socket a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so that's kind of taken shape. Let's go ahead and get the mouth area taken care of. Go into side view. And let's select these faces right here. I'm going to extrude, scale on the z-axis, so it's a little more narrow, and scale on the y-axis, so we start coming away from the edge right there. And let's kind of just scale it down a little bit more. And then extrude again, scale down. Don't want to scale too far on the y-axis. We don't want that to start coming forward. We just want it to have some thickness to the edges there. Okay, and one more time, scale it down on the x-axis. And go ahead and scale it on the y-axis a little bit as well. Move it back some. And let's go ahead and hit delete. We'll get rid of those faces. So we got a nice mouth going on here. Now let's select all of these edges here. Just hold down Alt and right click. Select that loop. And we're going to hit E to extrude again. Scale on the z-axis. So we kind of have a, getting the start of a, a, a lip, basically. Come around there and scale it down some. Let's get on the Z axis some more. And let's do it one more time. Extrude, scale it down. Let me undo something real quick. Undo, and I'm going to hit scale S, but I don't want to scale it on the Z axis because I don't want it to be any more, you know, less short or whatever. So I just hit Shift Z, and it's going to scale it on every axis but the z-axis, the, the x and y. So that's what I want to do, like so. I'm scale it on the y-axis some more so I get some more depth there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to start sewing that hole that's in the mouth now. I want to sew that together and, and, and fill it up. So what I want to do is select these vertices right there and this one as well. And you know what, let's go ahead and go around to the top. Select all these guys, and I'm going to extrude them and bring it all the way to the center to where it meets at the mirror, and then I'll add another face here at the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. And move it all the way over till it meets. It stops, there we go. And now, I'll need to, I guess I'll need to subdivide it, so control R, put a ring on there. And now I select this for C vertex, this one, this one, this one. Hit F and it'll put a face there. F face, same thing at the top. And there we go. So now we got a solid mouth inside there. Okay. We will mess with uh, teeth and tongues and, and gums and things like that later on. For right now we're going to just worry about the outside of the outside of the mouth, outside of the head, so. Okay, so we got our basic shape going. Um, what do we want to do now? Let's, uh, let's add a place for his horns to come out, the top of his head. Uh, you might notice my timelines here. Sometimes if I hit Alt-A by accident, it'll send, uh, well, every time I hit Alt-A Alt -A by accident, it'll start the timeline, so just Alt-A again. We'll stop playing it. Okay, let's put a ring right here, and let's give him some horns, let's say right here. Okay, we're just going to do the same thing we've done with the nostrils and the eye socket. Just hit E to extrude, scale down, and let's bring it up some so we kind of start coming out the top of his head. And then extrude one more time, scale it down, and we'll leave that one, well, let's bring it up just a little bit. Well, we'll extrude again. This time we'll go down, scale it down some, and extrude again. This time come up, and this is going to be the start of the horns. So I'll go ahead and extrude out some more, start curving them around back, scale it down. Let's go on a top view so we can see what we're doing a little better. I don't want it to go out, I want it to kind of curve back straight. So Scale it down. Okay, so there we go. Got some decent looking horns there. Now let's uh, go ahead and give him some ears. Edit mode yet again. And um, I guess let's select these four faces. 
and extrude out, scale it down. But let's scale it a little more on the y-axis so it's a little more, uh, a little more thin than, a, a little more tall and thin than it would be if it was just square. So let's make it a little taller. Hit uh, Z, and we'll go and extrude out again, a little bit, and then let's extrude out again and just bring it way out and scale it down. I know what you're thinking; it's starting to look kind of like a cow or a goat or something, but that's fine. We'll we'll take care of that after a while. Let's scale this on the y-axis some more, and let's go to front view and just uh, start making it look a little more like a dragon's ear and a little less like a cow's ear. I'm from Oklahoma. We got a lot of cows around here. Oops, wrong ring. There we go. Scale and Z. Select all of these here. Let's scale those down some. A little more narrow as well. Let's go on the Y axis. On the top view. Let's make this a little less thick. And let's sharpen it up some there on the tip. Okay, it's looking a little messy, but we'll fix it. Let's give uh, the, the ear some indentions there. Let's go into select all these faces here on the front. And E to extrude, scale it down. Scale it down on the Y axis, or the Z axis a little more. Let's kind of rotate it on the X axis some and bring it back. Now extrude one more time, scale it down, bring it up. Okay, so we're kind of getting a nice general ear shape. I'd like to kind of thicken this part right here up some, right there. There we go. Okay, now let's uh, let's start uh, throwing in some extra style. Don't I know what you're thinking? He's like that doesn't look anything like the other model. Well, trust me, it's it's of course it's not, but we'll get there. Don't worry. Let's uh, do some stylizing now. Let's grab. Um, let's do these guys right here, and we'll extrude them up just a little bit. Bring them forward just a little bit. And let's subdivide this edge right there. Get that in there. You can see it sharpens that up quite a bit. And one thing that'll help with our visualization here is go to Subsurf and go ahead and knock the views up to two. And then we can kind of see a little bit better what it's going to look like when we're done. Uh, let's give him some thicker eyebrows. Not, not the hairy eyebrows, but the, the brow. Thicken that up, and let's go ahead and cut that again right there. And let's uh, see if we can make the inside of the mouth look a little bit better before we go any further. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw a sphere in there so we have something to look at for the eyeball put our 3d cursor somewhere close to where we think the center of the eyeball should be about right there I would think looks good shift a add a UV sphere and the automatic segments that it puts in are too many so I'll go ahead and put 16 segments 16 rings that should be fine tab in edit mode scale it down about like so and go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees while you're at it and then tap back out and we have our eyeball so let's go ahead and turn on smooth shading and let's move it forward a little bit and let's go ahead and start modeling the eye socket to fit it a little easier a little better Let's 
sculpting and pulling around. You spend hours doing this kind of stuff if you got the patience. It's like a work of art. If you got the patience, you can make a masterpiece. Not saying that <laughs> I'm making a masterpiece right now, but uh, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Still looks kind of like a cow. What can we do to remedy this? Let's make the snout a little thinner. Scale it on the x-axis and bring it in some. And let's make it a little less make it a little less long, a little shorter. Let's grab all those scale on the y-axis, bring it in some. There we go. Looking like a big old cow. We'll fix it though. Let's go ahead and add a little ridge on his head as well, like we don't on his on his nose there. Let's grab all these faces right here. And that'll work. Extrude up some. Bring it forward some. And control R, that loop right there. There we go. Okay. Now, let's make some extra loops around here because we're going to start getting into some more detail. Right there, right there. I'd like to make the jaw a little thicker than the top of the mouth. So I'll grab that and let's grab this and pull it back some. Scale this down a little bit. Grab those, grab those, scale those down. Let's turn on the proportional fall off so each of these are a little smoother. There we go. Tab in the top view. Grab this one. Make it a little more narrow. Okay. And let's let's go into sculpt sculpt mode and start to uh, start pushing and pulling with the with the grab tool there. That'll be a little more fun, I think. Go to tool, grab. And let's make the size a little bigger. Put it up to about fifty or so. And start clicking and dragging on a few different places. One thing that's really handy to help you know where you can click and drag where you can't see, like right now I'm clicking and dragging but nothing's happening. Well, it's because there's really nothing there to click on. So let's turn on the wireframe view. First of all, uh, okay, do this. Go to Object and scroll down to Display and then hit, click on Wire. And we'll see our wireframe view of our model. Um, but this is the subdiv subdivided version, and that's not what we're really editing. So let's go to our Subsurf settings and uh, turn on Optimal Display if you scroll uh, widen that out, you'll be able to read the whole thing. Optimal display. Check that. And now, if you tab into edit mode, you can see that this is actually kind of a smoothened version of our actual mesh. So, that's what we want to work with. So now that I have, you know, my intersections, I can know where to click and drag. And it'll actually do what I'm wanting it to. Okay, so now we can start adding some de detail and some style in here. Make that nostril a little bit bigger. Start bringing it back some. And I'd like to kind of smooth this out up here. Uh, so I hit smooth. And that's one one thing that I required you to download the latest copy is because uh, well, later on, I'll, I'll be needing it also. But for right now, the Smooth Tool, uh, you might remember in some of my previous tutorials, I've tried to use the Smooth Tool with uh, with this, and I had to throw on the, the uh, multi-resolution surface uh, uh, modifier. But now it, it works with the subsurf like, like it used to in previous versions. So sit smooth and just start smoothing away. Works a charm. So there we go, and go back to my grab tool, and start making this lower jaw a little, a little bigger. Uh, 
bring the corners of the mouth back a little bit further. Bring this in just a little bit. And this in just a little bit. Let's add a sub, uh, a sub, subdivision. A uh, let's go back to edit mode. Let's add a loop right here, so we can get a nice corner of the mouth set in a little bit better. Now back to sculpt mode. Grab that. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring and close his mouth. That'll be that'll make it a little it'll look a little better in our preview. Round out the cheeks just a little bit first. Okay, go into edit edit mode and let's select the whole bottom jaw. Actually, let's round this out just a little bit in here inside the mouth. Okay, now we'll select the whole bottom jaw like so, and just pull it up until it starts. One thing you might notice is I'm moving the bottom jaw, but some of the vertices on the top jaw, are, or top of the mouth, top jaw, I guess it would be, are moving also. I don't want that, so I hit O, which is our proportional fall off. O turns it on and off. But if you hit Alt O, it turns on proportional fall off, proportional editing for connected. So since this isn't connected right here, this these vertices won't affect these. So I can move it there all day long, and it won't affect them. Even if I go, boom, right there, and then move it, still won't. So let's kind of close the mouth up. And then we can... There we go. Okay, so we're kind of seeing the dragon emerge a little bit. Um, let me turn on, go to my properties, hit N on my keypad and go down to display and let's turn off the grid floor because I kind of find it distracting when I'm modeling and turn off X and Y also. One thing I, I notice if I'm holding out alt and I accidentally click in the window somewhere it wants to grab it and, and keep hold of it. See I'm not pressing any buttons right now but my mouse is grab, is, has got a hold of it so uh, just hit <laughs> I'm not sure which button it is. Okay just left click and it'll it'll get you out of there and you can just control Z undo it. You know, while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and save this guy. Save as. And go up. I'm, I've got a dragon folder here in my, my normal Blender Files folder. So just name it, let's name it dragon underscore zero one. And we'll save as a Blender file. There we go. Okay. So let's, uh, let's go in and start seeing if we can't give it that nice sculpted look. And the way to do that... Well, you know what, before we do that, let's get the eyebrows looking the way I want. I think we're going to need another subdivision uh, loop right there. So let's pop back into edit mode and control R. Boom, right there. And we'll be able to round that out some more. There we go. Go ahead and get my grab tool. Go back to sculpt mode. Grab is already selected. And just... That's not wanting to work. What's the deal here? There we go. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Something's fishy's going on. Not wanting to grab anything. Something wrong? Did I select something? There we go. I must have had Alt held down yet again somehow. Okay. There we go. Okay, it's kind of giving him a, not quite a mean expression, but maybe, maybe a stern expression. Make his eyes a little, a little more menacing looking. He's not a mean dragon, but he is a stern dragon. Do not want to anger him. Okay, so let's spend hours 
tweaking the settings. It looks like he's kind of smiling. I don't want him to smile. He hasn't done anything that he needs to smile about. So let's... I want to go into edit mode. Boom. And I think the snout's a little too long yet again, so let's scale that down some. Make sure our proportional falloff is on. I guess it is. It's just not very big. There we go. Right, like so. And I want to kind of give it a nice tilt. Maybe about like that. Just a stylized. One thing that might help it out too is kind of bring this bridge of his nose up right there. That's more of a deselect, uh, deselect that guy and that guy. There we go. Let's just bring this up some, so it's more of a smooth transition from his forehead to his snout. Let's get that a little bit more. Okay, go ahead and save. And I guess we're far enough along now to where I can start giving those sharp corners like I mentioned before. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the display of the wireframe there. Just go back to object and turn off wire. There we go. Save. I like to save often as you know. And let's go into edit mode. And the way to get a sharp corner is to have two edges really near the, each other. So if I go, if I put an edge right there in between those two points and just click and then I can drag it down some. If I drag it closer to that bottom one you can see it's starting to sharpen up that edge. So if I just drag it real close to it and just click and then tab out, boom, we got a nice a nice carved edge there. So let's do that again in a couple other places. I'd like to do it across the top of the nostrils there. So let's do it right there. Drag it in some. Boom. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna play with that a little bit more here in a few minutes after we get everything set up. And this is kind of coming out too much, I think. Let's fix that up a little bit first. Okay, now I want to put a sharp edge across the top of his eyebrows. So let's put a another loop right there. Drag it down, and boom. Okay, now the problem is that edge is going all the way down, and I don't want that. That's easy to fix. Just go to sculpt mode and grab the smooth tool again and oops I hit my windows button on accident and just smooth out the area that you don't want sharp. Let's make that a little stronger. Did I hit alt again? I did. Huh. There we go. I guess I must have hit shift also. Oh, this is a mirrored side, so I shouldn't have. I don't need to worry about it at all. This is something's going on here with my keyboard. I think maybe one of my buttons are stuck. It's, like it's not smoothing. It's only smoothing a little bit as I'm dragging. This is odd. I've never had these problems until I'm recording something. I need to go up here and go smooth right there. Yeah, there we go. Kind of just got to play with the tools, I guess. It's going to smooth out this whole area. Kind of flattens it back down. Let's smooth it right there. And another thing you can do to get the sharp edge is if, say you already have two, two edges close together. Let's go into edit mode. Let's see. Say, okay, right here at the corner of the, the chin. We've kind of got two vertices already. Or, yeah two edges close together already, but I don't want to have to select them and try to move them. But that's that's an easy fix. Tab back into sculpt mode and just and select pinch this time. And then if you mouse over, if it's strong enough, let's make it a little bigger. Start mousing over. It's gonna start pinching those two 
edges closer together. So see, kind of went overkill on this one because it took the top and bottom one instead of the left and right one. So let's undo that. Kind of just back and forth motion. There we go. Maybe sometimes it's easier just to just to go ahead and select it and drag it up. Dragon on the dragon. Okay. Now, I want to make him kind of have a little bit of an underbite. So, go back to edit mode. Select all of these guys here and there. And proportional editing with connected is still selected, so I'll just drag that forward some, rotate it around, start bringing it up. And there we go. So, let's see. I don't want this to have this rounded edge here. So another tool you can get over here in the tool shelf for the sculpt tools is called the flatten. And that's kind of what that does. Kind of just flattens things out. Sometimes a little too much. But you can play with the settings here. I want to sharpen the edge of the nostrils up just a little bit. There we go. Okay. Kind of seeing the dragon emerge. Still kind of has that cow look about it. So let's uh, see what we can do to try to get rid of that. Let's uh, turn these ears into more, more of a pointed to get the grab tools. And grab the whole thing. Seems like if you zoom out some, you can grab more a bigger piece of stuff. Drag those down, drag that up. Make it a little sharper there. I guess if I made my brush a little bigger, it might be the same thing as zooming out some. Kind of triangular shape. Let's uh, go into side view. And let's bring the bottom of the ear back some and the top forward. a little bit of a streamlined look. Okay. Now we can see it's way too thin inside here. It's just not matching up with everything else at all. So we can do, <clears throat> excuse me, we can uh, get the inflate tool. Just run that around there and it kind of does, uh, well, what it says. It inflates it. It's kind of like a bicycle tire or something like that. It's just going to make it a little fatter. That's kind of what we want on this particular occasion. Okay. All right. I'm going to smooth tool again. Kind of smooth some of this up down here. Getting a little messy. Okay. So that's looking good now. Go ahead and save. Control S. And just to see what it's going to look like, let's grab the eyeball and let's shift D, duplicate it, drag it over on the X axis to fill the other eye socket. About like so. And kind of get a feel of how this is going to look with eyeballs. Okay. It's getting there. There's still a couple of things I'd like to do. For example, I would like the jaw to kind of come out more of at an angle than the than the head instead of being more or less straight up and down. So, let's tab, grab the model and tab into edit mode. And let's select everything here. And let's put our 3D cursor right here at the top. And I guess it doesn't really matter which where it is here, but we'll go ahead and put it kind of in the center. One on the numpad to go to the front view. And we're going to rotate around the 3D cursor, which is right there. So now when I rotate this, it's going to kind of start swinging out. Then I can just drag it and move it back in. Let's do a little bit more. Like so. Okay. That's starting to look a little better. 
a little less cow-like, a little more dragon-like. Go ahead and save. And let's fix those eyeballs where they turn back, back, turn the pivot point back to the median. Let's drag the eyeballs back to their sockets. Let's drag them up some. Okay, looking good. Save. And let's go ahead and edit the eye sockets a little bit. They're they're a little bland compared to the, everything else now. Let's just start adding some more loops in here. The more loops you have, the more detail you can put in. Click. There we go. Let's add one right here. Okay. Now we'll go back into sculpt mode. Make sure our grab tool is selected. Start cleaning up this eye socket some to where it fits the eyeball a little bit better, yet still has a nice menacing look about it. Might even look nice if he kind of has kind of some bags under his eyes, sort of. And we can achieve a nice line through there with what? That's right, the pinch tool. Let's grab that. Let's click in there. I'll start adding a line. Maybe it's a little too much. So, let's do this. Let's get the smooth tool, kind of clean that up a little bit again. And let's go ahead and save. And that's starting to look good. Let's uh, get the grab tool. Grab that corner inside there ever so gently. Bring it in until it completely touches the eye. And let's go into edit mode. Let's see what we can do to maybe get that a little bit sharper. Let's just turn off the proportional fall off. If you're in proportional editing and you hit O again, it's going to turn it completely on. Well, what I mean is if you're in the proportional fall off editing and it's on the connected setting, if you hit O again, it's going to go to the full setting. So you got to hit O one more time. Make sure your cursor's in the 3D window, and it'll turn it off. So you got to hit it twice, really, to get it turned off once you have it turned on in the selection mode, or the connection mode. Anyway, so let's kind of do a manual baggy eyes here. There we go. That's looking a little better. Let's get some back up in here as well. I'd like to add a little more detail in here. So I'm pushing and pulling those all around. It's kind of smoothing out a little more than I like. So I'm going to add another loop right there. See what that looks like. Yeah, it's starting to look okay. You know what? Let's go into edit mode. Let's, I'm going to undo that real quick and redo it, except this time make it a little closer to that edge. So we got a nice, a nice sharp edge on it. My grab tool already selected. Just kind of start playing with that until it fits the eye a little bit better and has a nice clean edge on it. Okay, now I think the eyebrows might be a little too high, so let's grab the edges of those and start bringing those down some. Maybe even... Let's, let's do something real quick. Let's see if I can do it. Um, let's add like a little wrinkle right here. We could do that with the texture map, but it'll be more fun this way. Let's grab, put the, uh, put a loop right there, control R. And let's put another loop right beside it. And then let's grab this first one that we made. And let's drag it back a little bit. I 
and kind of close the gap up here right here. Grab all those guys, move them up some. Okay, kind of what I was going for. Let me see if I can't clean it up a little bit right here. Okay, it's looking pretty mean, huh? Let's see, what else can we do to stylize this? I'm kind of thinking right now I want to make the eyes a little bigger compared to the rest of it. So we can either make the eye bigger or we can make everything else smaller. So, I think that might be the easier option, actually. So, let's put our 3D cursor, go back to object mode, put our 3D cursor, go and hit Z to go into wireframe view, put our 3D cursor, yet again, 3D cursor, 3D cursor, 3D cursor, right there in the middle of the eyeball, about like so. You know, it might even benefit us to grab that eyeball and move it up some. Yeah. Okay. Now we've got our... 3D cursor right there where the eyeball is. I want to go into edit mode, select, hit A to select everything, and then let's deselect everything that's directly around the eyeball itself. Do that. Get in there. There we go. And right here. Let's deselect these guys as well. Now to deselect with what I just did, uh, you hit B to get your crosshairs. You hold down Alt, click and drag. It'll deselect what you select. Does that make sense? It'll deselect what you moused over, what your what your box selected. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's turn on the proportional fall off. O, and let's scale it on the or around the 3D cursor pivot points. We'll scale it down. Like so. Alright, I'm starting to like this guy. Control save. Control S saves. And let's see, what can we do? What can we do? Let's uh, flatten out this jaw area. There's a little bit of a crease on there that I don't want. So let's go into edit mode. Let's grab that edge right there. Turn off. Hit O again to turn off proportional fall off. Just click that and drag that forward so. And this guy. And get the old smooth tool. Sculpt mode. Smooth. Let's kind of just... Let's turn it down. Let's undo that and turn the strength down a little bit. Just gently drag it over there. And then grab the pinch tool. See if we can't sharpen that back up. Yeah, there we go. Okay, looking good, looking good. Let's put uh, some sharp edges here on the ear. Tab in edit mode. Control R, right there. Bink, and it's going to add a sharp edge all the way around the head, so we'll see how well that works. I guess that works okay. Kind of gives some definition to the top of the snout, too, as well as the bottom. And sharpens up the top of that ear. Grab the smooth tool touch in here, just clean that up ever so gently. There we go. Okay. Save this guy. And let's work on these horns. They're kind of just generic right now. Let's see if we can't make them look a little better. So let's, um, I guess we'll go into edit mode. Let's go into side view. And let's grab the tip of them and bring it down. It's back towards the head a little bit. And that's looking good. Let's make it a little bigger around right here. And the base of it a little bigger as well. So we'll, This time we'll go Alt-S, and that's going to scale it, along, scale it along its normals. It looks like I need to select some more. Let's get this next loop up. There we go. And turn on Proportional Editing. Alt-S. There we go. See how well that looks. That looks good. Nice, kind of squared off, just like we're wanting. Except uh, it's kind of getting weird right there. So let's go in here, grab those, and move them forward. 
Gotta make this less less rounded there. Grab that and that guy. Bring him down some. Sometimes if you hit uh, Shift G, it'll bring up the select similar thing, which I never use. Sometimes I bring the menu up by accident, as you can see. So I was just telling you what that is. Okay, so squared off horns. Let's kind of fix that up in here. Grab the smooth already grabbed. Gently come in here, clean this up. Like so. Okay, let's uh, see if we can sharpen that edge right there. Grab the pinch tool. Gently. And let's do this side as well. Okay, looking good, looking good. Go ahead and save. And let's, this is kind of bugging me right here, the top of his forehead. Grab that vertex there. Turn the... Ah, geez, these little pop-ups keep bugging me. Uh, back to medium point. Drag it up. Okay. Now, we've got our basic head shape done. Go ahead and save. Save, save, save. You'll keep hearing me say that. Let me, uh, let me smooth this up a little bit first. Smooth. Touch it up. There we go. Save it. Okay. So now... We will do one more thing, and then uh, I think that I'll call it call it a day on this part one. Don't worry, we're going to create this whole dragon. We're going to have as many parts as we need to get an awesome-looking dragon. So uh, before we shut down for the time being, let's start on his neck. So let's select all these at the back of his head. And these guys as well. Side view. Let's go ahead and scale that on the Z axis a little bit. Rotate it out some. And just go ahead and start extruding out. Rotate it around. Kind of almost an S shape, but not quite. Make sure I'm not coming out to the side too much. There we go. Let's go in the top view. Nah, eh, stay in side view. One thing that happens when I just hit extrude in it, I drag it out along that line, as you can see. Looks fine from the side view, but if I click, you can see that it was going outward. It's going along its normal, so I don't want it to do that, so I'm going to undo. And hit E to extrude, and then just go and click, and it'll clear out the line to follow along. Then you should drag it, turn off proportional fall off, proportional editing, and just drag it. You can scale it a little bit like so. Rotate it, whatever, extrude again. Oops, I followed along that edge, didn't I? So extrude, just drag, scale it on the z-axis. And let's select this loop here. Actually, I want to add another loop right here so we get a little bit smoother transition on his neck here. Let's just add a few more loops, one more there. And let's select this guy and this guy. Turn on, proportional fall off. And let's turn it way up. Actually, let's hit Alt O so we got connected. So I don't. I noticed I was moving the horns a little bit, and I don't want to do that. Let's move it up here a little bit, and let's grab the very back of it. Move that forward some, and rotate it down. Okay. Got some work to do there, but let's go ahead and do this. Let's grab all of these on the back here, like so, and hit delete. And we'll delete them out. So now, when we look at it, it'll be a nice clean cut rather than trying to round out, round off at the end. So, got our basic neck here. Let's get our grab tool and let's go to work making it look more like a like a neck. You know what, this might have been easier in edit mode, so I'm going to undo all that. Okay. Go into edit mode. And let's select that sharp corner right there. Don't want that guy. Okay. And fall off is on. Good. And just, just 
Just drag it down. Like so, how's that looking? That's looking pretty good, I guess. Still a little thick at the top, so let's... I don't want to do the whole thing on the top. Just grab those guys and move those over see what it looks like. There we go. And let's go ahead and smooth that neck up a little bit right here. Smooth. Okay. Now, one thing that you can that you might notice is it looks a little flat. Well, that's because we're looking at it in the non-perspective view. If we hit 5 on our numpad, it'll throw it into the perspective view. You can kind of see what it's going to look like in the 3D space. So, it's looking pretty good. I'm I'm happy with these results. So, let's go ahead and one thing to do real quick Smooth out the bottom of the nostrils right there. And let's grab the pinch tool and clean that up a little bit. Right there. Okay, so we got the, the pretty much the, the general look, the style down. I'll go ahead and back into flat view. So we're doing pretty well so far. We'll go into the next part and we'll maybe tweak the face a little bit more and then go on to the body and maybe the 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 legs and feet and claws and things like that so okay well thanks for watching and i hope you're as excited as i am about this project and i will catch you in part 2